to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
actually, it's a printout that you can fill out. Yeah, and somebody at City Hall can print that out. Yep, yeah, I think there are copies available at City Hall. So yeah, we got all bases covered. Uh, because we wanted to offer one of the huge requirements with the state is that they want to make sure that public participation has been provided through the entire planning process. Um, so this is kind of where we're at. We will be submitting a formal application on November 12th. Um, awards are tentatively scheduled to be released on December 7th. Um, and then after that, we'll know um, how to move forward. So if there are any questions at this time, Mayor, if you'll open. Do you want to open for public? Is there anyone here wishing to speak on this topic? I have a question. Please take yeah. your name. I'm Debbie Lowe from the Carroll County Comet. And uh, Emily, you said something about a comprehensive planning grant. And is this a land use, comprehensive land use planning grant? So land use is part of a comprehensive okay. plan. There, so a comprehensive plan is literally comprehensive. and that's 
going to tell you the direct figure that is intended to benefit the low to moderate income population. Because we are doing this activity with the intent to do community development, community and economic development to better quality of life, quality of place um, for the low to moderate income residents of Delphi. And tell us again what are some of the possible um, avenues for money. Of this money, the money goes directly to the planning endeavor. So in this in this one, it will go for comprehensive planning for the grant. It is going to go to pay your consulting fees and your grant administration fees. And once the grant is developed, that will be shared with us as another timeline for that or the, the proposal. The plan? Um, so the plan will, oh, oh yeah, there's a full process. Gail, your schedule, you better start clearing that because you're going to have lots of meetings. So there, um, OCRA has really wanted the community to take kind of the reins of planning process. I don't know if you guys, you guys haven't done a utility plan in the last five years or so, have you? You guys haven't? We're in the process of doing one now. Okay. So, um, but not through OCRA? No. Okay, so not through OCRA. Okay. So with OCRA, the cool thing that's really, um, getting community involvement is there has to be, no matter what consultant is selected, there has to be a local steering committee. And that cannot just be your average steering committee that is typically, you know, your council, um, your community development people, your utility people. Oh, no, 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 no. They take it a step further. They have a list of people that they want to see. They want residents. They want not-for-profit people. They want small business owners, they want industry partners at the table having these conversations with city leadership because they want this plan to not be consultant XYZs or the states. They want this plan to be the city of Delphi. They want it to be the information that they want in it. They want it to be the priorities that are identified, the needs, those goals, those objectives, and those tangible strategies to get that plan implemented at the physical level. Because so often we were finding that consultants were putting together these plans for their own good. They weren't plans for the good of the community. They were plans that, um, and I've read a couple of myself, um, they were very cookie cutter. Um, literally on some of them as we were proofing, we were finding community A, it was for community A, but we were finding community B's name within it. Um, because they literally did not take the other community's name out of it. So this is putting in another one of those layers to make it true to that community that has applied and worked hard for that money. The state also has implemented a review process where our community liaison, Jerry White, actually reviews the plan prior to you, the council, approving your final document. So there is a draft review um, it goes that he will review, he sends it back to the consultant with all comments and things, and corrections get made, then it comes to you for your public hearing and to be voted upon and passed. So it really, the process really makes it fit your guys' schedule, your needs, um, and it makes it so that it's a plan that's going to be user-friendly, not just sitting on a shelf collecting dust. So have you worked on one of these for another community this size? Okay, so we're looking at a certain process and what's the overall cost? Your overall cost? Yeah. For this comprehensive plan? Mm -hmm. Literally fifty five thousand five sixty. Well, this is to get the, the ball rolling and mm -hmm. that's everything we're not gonna That's do. paying your consultant and my fees, our curtsy fees. So that's everything. That's everything. Yep. Ms. Connor, can I ask you to move your mic a little closer to me? I've known you all my life, and that's the point that I've heard. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, so that is, you really, I mean, for a 10% local match, um, I mean, what you're getting, and typically, um, outside of the grant, I mean, this would be a lot more costly um, by not going this avenue. So, um, it's a great opportunity for you guys
additional public comments. And the public hearing is hereby closed at 6.16 p.m. And the council meeting resumed. Thank you, Emily. Thank you. We move next to reading of minutes from the October 18, 2021 meeting presented here for approval. Are there any additions, subtractions, deletions, or amendments to this set of minutes? Council has been presented with written with the department head reports without objection. The department head reports are incorporated by reference into the minutes. <coughs> so under unfinished business tonight, we will hear from the third of the broadband providers who responded to the city's request for proposals. JT, would you like to introduce Gary Collins? Yes, as Mayor indicated, tonight is the third uh, proposal we received, which is from Barry Tom, and so they will present on their proposal and uh, look forward to continuing this discussion on the broadband. So without any further ado, we introduce the team here. Uh, Rob Ramsey is who I've spoken directly with, so I'll let him introduce the rest of the team uh, from Barry Thank you. Uh, my name is Rob Ramsey, the Director of Business Development for the two sister companies, Barry Hit, which is a utility construction company, and Barry Common, which is a fiber Could you take a, a microphone? Yeah. So 
very end is utility construction company that build out fiber optic networks for REFCs and so it's been around about 20 years. Uh, like I said, they do a lot of work for telephone companies and uh, REMCs building out their fiber optic networks. Uh, Barry did, like I said, is a fiber of the home uh, ISP internet service provider. Uh, we currently have networks in Walton, Indiana, and Royal Center. Uh, we're building out Cicero and Arcadia as well. Uh, we first started talking a couple of months ago about kind of an overall fiber optic project for the area. Uh, we put some numbers out, they were a little higher than what was anticipated, so we kind of reduced the scope, um, revised our, our, our network, yeah, like I say, the scope, and uh, so we're pitching that again, I guess, a little bit more of a smaller scale that uh, would be fit more into the budget. Uh, with me, we've got Corey Childs, uh, who's the president of Barry Con. He must be Corey. Been here two weeks, so we'll keep him quiet. Uh, and then we've got our the main presenter, Cash Lambert, who's the manager of Vericom. Good evening. Like Rob, like Rob said, I'm Cash. I'm the manager here at Vericom. Um, we do the home. You know, we're a firm believer in you know the whole saying of you know it's not if it's not fiber, it's not broadband. Um, and that's you know my own experience. We've We've looked at that although it is a solution, it's not a long-term solution. So since then we've you know changed our focus about four years ago, um, and you know we're doing our best to build the networks out to our wireless subscribers and get them on fiber. So we we came a few months ago when we met uh, with the mayor and uh, just kind of just you know here's our proposal, here's what we can do, here's kind of you know the best plan of action. For the city to really transform the way you know your residents, you know, have experienced broadband in the past, and you know, you know, the last 12 months for all of us have been a roller coaster, obviously. And uh, so we, you know, we realize how important broadband is, not only for you know e-learning, but for somebody who wants to start a small business you know, in the spare bedroom of their house. And, you know, to be able to do that with revenue just to connect with other people, you know, not only just stateside, but, you know, across the world and stuff like that, you know. So we kind of threw together a about four-page document here. I think everyone should have a copy of here. I mean, if you don't have a copy, we can email you guys a copy as well. Uh, so it just kind of dives into the services that we're going to offer and just some of the technical side of things of what kind of equipment is going to be in the head in here, what kind of service we want to offer in town. And so we kind of broke this down into, you know, just different sections here for our proposal. And the two packages that we're going to offer, that we're going to offer here are 250 meg down and up. We offer some electrical speeds in all our packages. And then a gig service as well. Um, and so those are going to be competitive in pricing compared to, you know, the competitors that are here today. And so if you, if you flip over to the second page, you'll see the two, you know, the, the tiers, how they break down. So it's 75 bucks a month for 250 meg, and then 119 a month for the gig service. And with those, we also offer like a whole house Wi-Fi solution. So, you know, obviously the modem's included with those prices because you have to have more, you know, the couch the gear to the, even have there you come. And then we always suggest that, you know, our subscribers rent the router from us. Not only, you know, not from a revenue standpoint of us trying to sell something, but necessarily for them to have the best experience. And that's because we can manage it all from the cloud and see, you know, are you having an old device that's on your network cause an issue? And so, you know, you might call in and be like, hey, we can say, you might, you know, this device, a Wii, if you guys have ever had a Wii, that's a legacy device, and that causes issues on your Wi-Fi. So, you know, we just see your Wi-Fi health and, you know, just, you just check in and stuff like that. And we also offer an app that comes with our service, uh, just a very common Wi-Fi experience. You can manage all your devices on there. You can say you want to have a time schedule for your kids to their Wi-Fi to shut off at 6 p.m. or whatever it is, you know. Well, there it is. Um, you know, if someone's trying to connect to your, to your network, it's just a one-click thing. It sends you a notification, hey, you know, 
cash is trying to connect to your Wi-Fi network, yes or no. So it just makes it real simple, and that all comes with our install. Uh, you know, education is a big part of kind of what we are and what we do. And you know, we take that extra time to really give the subscriber the best experience because you know we don't want to leave anybody with any questions whenever we leave your house or your business or whatever it may be. And so there on the, <coughs> the table there on the second page, you'll see a grand total of 1.038 million. 750,000 of that is does include this a 13 mile backbone ring that goes through Delphi. We, that cost is priced with almost a lot of it being underground. I'm sure as you guys know, a lot of Delphi is limestone. Um, so there's gonna be, you know, we'll have to overcome some you know, hurdles there with new underground construction. But I think everything goes south of the rail bed here over to, I think it's, is it Market Street, I think? Once you get on the east side of Market, it starts turning into limestone. I think it's Wilson Street. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I have a picture here on my phone, but. So a lot of that, you know, would be come hand in hand with, you know, partnering with the local power company to be able to get on the poles. And we know there's going to be, you know, make readies and you know fees associated with that. And so we work with the city um, and the power company here to, you know, kind of get some of those fees uh, waived because that will speed up you know, the process of us building this backbone through the town. And then outside of the backbone, you have fiber laterals. And there's there's funding out there for that. Um, you know, we'd be willing to work with you know the town, you know, the city, and all that to see you know what all funds we can get to provide you know services for these laterals to pass every house. Uh, Barricom, you know, we're willing to you know have some contribution to that. Um, with that being you know obviously the customer printing equipment, and then the majority of the drops going from you know from the utility pole or from the handhold that's in the ground to the house. Um, and so that's, and it's kind of, we estimate right now about 800 subscribers just off this initial build. So that's that's just kind of a breakdown of, you know, our header equipment, the backbone, and just some, you know, customer premises equipment to, you know, really get going, get a good, you know, head start here for to serve, you know, the community. The next page just kind of goes through everything I almost explained there. Uh, about a 13 mile, you know, backbone, and a lot of these costs are derived from, uh, you know, the networks that we've built out in the past of our own in Walton and Royal Center, and we're we're building out some sort of Arcadia currently. It averages about 1,500 a pass. So, you know, each of them is 1,500 bucks is kind of what we base our business model on, and then that's where you know kind of get the money and. Going aerial on the poles will help you know reduce that cost and be able to not only you know expand the network with the amount of money there, but also to be able to hook up more subscribers. So you know, say it's really a thousand. Well, if we can go on the poles, maybe we can do twelve hundred. So that is kind of what that page breaks down. And then on our fiber ground uh, disturbing activities, we do our absolute best to not just you know go in any kind of like water sheds and stuff like that. It's all, um, if you guys have ever looked at the Purdue soil map, you'll see like a lot of like water stuff and also the GIS website here for Delphi, you'll see that as well. And so, you know, the whole idea is to have minimal disturbance of the ground here. Um, a lot of it, you know, we might have to open trips to some, depends on where the limestone beds are. So, and that's all done that uh, Purdue's put a lot of time into this study, that, especially for Indiana, because that's how we face a lot of our underground construction, and boy, is it accurate. So, we found that out whenever we, we went to go bore across some, uh, by the creek in Logansport, and the limestone bed was almost maybe two feet, and that's, we had to open the trench and get it, you know, jack and all kinds of stuff to get, you know, at the utility that we desired. On the last page here, you'll see just kind of a, a shaded map, and I do apologize. Some of the copies are a little dark. Um, those ones ran to the copy and the lighter ones. If you're lucky enough to do one of the lighter ones, I printed them around my computer. Uh, so the shaded area is what we estimate the initial cost to build out. And that's the 13 miles going through the town there. And we have to you know, bring some fiber in, uh, I think, from the south side of town. But, um, 
that 13 mile of green will you know go in the circumference of that shaded area. And then as the laterals as we come off of there, you know, we could you know see what you know the immediate areas we might need to build laterals to to serve you know certain you know municipal buildings and stuff like that. So a big part of uh, you know very common us coming to local communities is we always try to uh, give back. And the best way we've seen to give back is to provide a lot of the municipality buildings with free service. So, and you know, we you know, get a list of those from you guys and say, you know, we could do these 10 or whatever it looks like. Um, in Walton and World Center and Cicero, we do, you know, like their lift stations, water treatment plant, their town hall, community centers, and stuff like that. And at the community centers, we provide a free Wi Fi service and all that we ask is that we could just put a little sticker in the window saying the free Wi-Fi provided by Baricom. And then you can take it to the landing page to, you know, has a FAQ on there of questions and whatnot. If they want to get service, well, you can do it off your phone. So that's just kind of the overview of our proposal. But uh, open to questions, obviously, if you guys have any questions. So the map that you have provided, um leaves out an awful lot of the residential areas of Delphi. Um, yeah. They use the south. Yeah, yeah. So, and we're basing a lot of this cost off of um, the majority of it being underground. Because it's, as far as you know, getting on the poles, sometimes that can really hinder the project and delay a project from being expanded to all residential areas. So. You know, this is, we've seen in the past that most of the back one does have to go underground if we can't get on the poles in a timely manner to properly serve, you know, subscribers and people who are without. If we get closer too, we could look at this just being like the initial deployment, like the first maybe 18 to 24 months. Yeah. And, and as we accumulate you know, customers and things like that, we expand the network to go back. What was your time frame? Uh, Two construct. Uh, we, so the just the back room, I would say about 12 to 18 months. Once you know we have it's engineered and we've done like, like soil samples, load testing on the poles, stuff like that. What poles we need to have make ready. So there's a lot that goes into it before we actually, you know, have you know fiber going into the ground or hanging on a pole. So and the load testing for the power poles can take some time sometimes. But we we have the team and the expertise to do it. So. Do you have any like statistics on like uptime or downtime or some of these? Uh, so typically, whenever we go into a city, we have redundant leads coming in. So you know, say on this, it'd be from kind of north and south here, and two leads coming on each side of the state. So we have our own data center set up and everything, and we're able to feed it with 100 gig wherever we need. So we do our best to keep 99% uptime. You know, 100% the best we can. Um, obviously, you know. If you know, a storm rolls through or something crazy happens or somebody digs up a fiber, you know, there might be a small section of subscribers that would be without. But we keep we do everything in house, so that's the perk of us doing the whole job from A to Z. From us engineering it to at least sitting at your kitchen table and educating you on why you should stream and save money and stuff like that. So we we try to a key part of that is to hire local and train local. So you know, we would open up an office here, and we want to train and hire local residents. And I mean, if they have experience, great. If they don't have experience, we got the training program to train them. So. Any other questions? Once um, any equipment goes like on a pole or in the ground, like how long is that usually good for before it begins to wear out? So with, uh, so say we have to put something stuff in the ground, if we will. You know, all that goes in uh, conduit, plastic conduit, and it's what from what we've seen is 20 plus years. It's good because they come with shielded and stuff like that. Especially with the aerial cables, they're meant to be, you know, in the weather, all kind of meant to take a beating, you know, high winds and all that, and have high steam and off of them. So typically, you know, it's they're good typically until they somebody damages them. You know, a combine or something 
tucks through or a bucket truck, somebody tries to put the boom down. We've all seen it. You know, so. schedule of Board of Works meeting, it might be better to change that schedule a little bit after uh, looking at that. I think this first schedule was what we kind of discussed at our last uh, meeting when we reviewed this, uh, but uh, I think we could change the deadline to January 14th, review by council uh, the week of the 17th through the 21st, and then meeting to award sometime during that week of the 24th. And then the Board of Works docket for February 7th uh, look to approve the awards and then um, the uh, text could be available towards the end of that week. So, discussion? Other comments? Discussion? Did we um, designate that it was only going to be businesses for that this time? We did not. What was recommended was that uh, the, we did add a line to the rubric uh, that indicates you know, whether they're within or within one mile, and then that would be included in the score. So we might have a higher score for businesses that are within the corporate limits. I'd like to see it go back to just um, businesses that are within the corporate limits being qualified to apply since our funds are so limited this time. I would say that might be different for the others. I would just like to see maybe a package to the equation additionally. 
But it's part of the historic record. And additionally, um, there's some uh, dock points or some consideration in the rubric of people that have received all three grants mm -hmm. as almost like a negative evaluation um, towards that. So to kind of acknowledge what you were saying and kind of take that back to it. So a higher ranking for uh, those who have not received any grants or have only received perhaps one grant. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Do you not think that's going to give a benefit to those people that were outside of corporation limits and didn't get to apply for those three times? The people that were outside of corporation limits and didn't get to apply all three of the first rounds, they're going to rank higher because they have less money given to them and that automatically puts them a leg up over some of our local businesses. And that was my concern for continuing to uh, go outside the corporate limits. You can just determine how many points you give to each other thing, right? So how many points for somebody that's received in you know, all three, how many points for somebody outside the city? So you could technically make a balance, right? But I, I would rather see, I mean, so if someone that's received you know, three grants, maybe four grants, fifteen thousand dollars, I would I, I think it's time for somebody else to I would rather see a, so someone that's only received one or two grants within the city, I do think should still be probably ranked higher than someone else. I would say, but I think somebody outside the city limits should be ranked higher than somebody that's gotten three rounds so far. So sure. Or we could just put in a clause that we've received all three times that those applications don't need to apply.
feel doing it. Um, you can do it as a group. We typically, most of our communities do it as a group with their scoring committee, um, and they just fill out one scoring group for the entire, um, but it's just, you need that scoring group. So I'm looking for right now, I would recommend um, a category for if you've received grants three times, that's just minus 15 points. Changes. What about the timeline? This has to be closed out by the end of May. Is that correct? Yes. yes. This is a small business resilience yeah. grant program, so it's not for the homeowners or yeah. the okay. 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 okay, so um, we had you know discussion as far as uh, changing the timeline a little bit. Everyone is is consensus all right on approving that uh, timeline and the revisions. Uh, including that if you've received all three grants, it would be a deduction of 15 points. Uh, if you are outside the city limits, that would be a deduction of 15 points. Consensus? Anyone opposed to that? Can you restate the timeline one more time, please? So the uh, 
Applications were open on December 13th. The deadline for submittal would be January 14th by 4.30 p.m. A review by council at a work session to be set up one of those next two weeks. Um, the awards uh, to <coughs> board information to Leanne by Wednesday prior to February 7th so that they can be on the February 7th docket. And then uh, also that information would go simultaneously to Kirksey so that they can do the income verification. And then um, once uh, approved on the Board of Works docket, uh, checks would be available towards the end of that week of February 7th. Thank you. Sound good? Yeah. Okay, so moving on then to new business. The first um, item on the new business is resolution 2021-13. Authorization to apply for the Oakbrook Planning Grant. Um, and I think I have 12 in the uh, information packet that was sent out. A little bit of confusion on my part on this. Uh, the Council approved Resolution 2021 11 for such an application in September without a match. And subsequent, subsequently, we learned that Oprah had reinstated the uh, match requirement that had been waived during COVID. So um, that um, resolution is not accurate at this point. Uh, we, um, so I don't, Mayor, I think this is a question, do we need to rescind that resolution or just do this resolution? Or should this resolution be sent down? Uh, this, this resolution will automatically well, invalidate okay. the previous resolution. Okay. Okay, so, um, this would be resolution 2021-13, an authorization to apply for the Oakbrook Planning Grant uh, with a match requirement of $5,560. Uh, <clears throat> the match uh, can be funded out of the edit community development and planning line item, which uh, will have sufficient balance to cover that expense. Is there a motion to pass resolution 2021-13? I'm going to come back 21, 20, 20, 20, 30. Second. I'll second. <coughs> Discussion? All those in favor of accepting the resolution or approving the resolution signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next is the proposed holiday schedule for 2022. Uh, the city personnel policy and procedures manual authorizes the mayor to establish the schedule unless there is a change proposed from, from, from the normal schedule. And since the New Year's Day will be celebrated on December 31st, 2021, which is also what the state is doing, um, I thought it prudent to bring the schedule before the council. Is there a motion to adopt the proposed holiday schedule for 2022? I move that we adopt the holiday schedule for 2022. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next is the service agreement for trash collection between Trash Cans LLC and the City of Delphi. The contract was awarded to Trash Cans by the Board of Works at the meeting earlier this evening, and the service agreement was approved by that body. Since it is a multiple year agreement, it is also being presented to Council. Uh, is there a motion to approve the agreement for the Trash Cans LLC? I have a question here. It was sent out earlier today to the council and to the board of orders. Okay. A motion to pass. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. So with the 
of the trash cans uh, proposal uh, at uh, basically at 1495 per customer. The, the next item, uh, there's also be a discussion of the rates that we charge uh, to residents. Uh, right now, um, we're collecting $10 uh, under the present contract with, uh, well, I'm not sure what our actual revenue is or what we're actually getting charged right now by this management, but um, we are not presently covering the expense of the contract with waste management. Um, at ten dollars, we're collecting, and assuming that we have nine hundred and eight customers, um, you know, we would be collecting one hundred eight thousand nine hundred and sixty dollars per year. Um, and um, the uh, with trash cans at nine hundred and eight, that figure is going to be. Um, $162,895. So we're going to be in arrears by $53,935 um, under the contract uh, that we just uh, signed. So um, we do have a fund balance in solid waste of $106,348. Uh, um, so assuming that we did not increase rates, uh, we could, that would carry us through almost two years uh, without increasing rates. And then, you know, then we're really in the hole. So um, that, um, I guess that's, that's a question uh, for council. Who may, we haven't increased rates, I believe, for 10 years, is it? I don't think it's ever been increased because you got away with the truck. Has it, Eric? No, it hasn't. That's, that's the ten dollars was tacked on the bill when we removed the trash truck from Delphi and had a fine contract. It's never ever been changed or adjusted. I'd like to propose that since we have such healthy reserves for the city and we just increase the tax rate on the citizens that we uh, bear the cost of this completely and take the expense to each customer down to zero dollars a month. I think it's time for us to give back to the citizens. We cannot continue to tax and hoard. We have a very healthy reserve, and we need to give back to the taxpayers, and I think this would be a great place to start. I'll disagree. So I do think that you know, at some point, you have to increase what you're charging. Um, it is 2021. We are looking at some pretty insignificant inflation. People should probably expect that their water rates, their trash service, everything is going up. The groceries are going up. So um, would people be pretty upset about you know, trash rate increase? Sure. But I want to remind um, you, yes, that no fighter still remains for trash service water service and wastewater service one of the lowest rates around. I don't think that's the consideration. I think we have to start doing something for the taxpayers. We constantly are nickel and diming them to death and we have this healthy surplus and they see what's been done at this council in the last couple of months. We're reserving $2.5 million for development out there that doesn't benefit them the way that this would. $15 a month for some of these people is a lot of money. And I don't care if we have the lowest rates. It's time for us to give back. This is $170,000. We've spent that much money for financial analyses and all of these studies and things like that in the past year. And we haven't given any benefit back to the taxpayer. And we just raised the tax rate again. I mean, I hear the word on the street. I am the one of us who is out there every day in person, in the school, in the grocery store. People know me and they come to me and you think I come here just to complain. I am a voice for not only my constituents but for this entire town and they are tired of the constant backbreaking. And, and I think that we owe them 
a good faith gesture. Instead of increasing their, their rate, let's give them something for nothing. We can afford this. Can I say something? That is your whatever I'm supposed to be, write your checks. First of all, I mean, solid waste is not tax revenue. Mm -hmm. Solid waste is supported, it's an enterprise that is supported entirely by the revenue mm -hmm. it, it collects. It, is, it does not receive tax revenue. So what you're suggesting to do, you're taking it and you're going to remove it from an enterprise and you're going to have to incorporate it into your general fund somehow in order to be able to use tax revenue. And I don't know that you can do that because it is an enterprise. I understand that. I, I how, do we have, how do we have a surplus? I'm, I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm, that's okay. And you have a surplus. I mean, let me explain something to you. It is extremely wonderful that you have a surplus. You have cities and towns within the state of Indiana in the last five years that have went bankrupt. Right. I'm not saying you should hoard money, and we by no means have hoarded money. There has been lots of money invested in the city of Delphi the last five years, the last 10 years. It is a good thing that people prior to the last two administrations as you call it, hoarded money. Because had it not put back, been put back, you'd have never accomplished stealth. You would have never had the revenue in order to establish funds to set up and accomplish what you've done for Delphi in three years, which would normally take the city of town 15 or 20 years. You do not have excess money. You're not breaking the back of taxpayers because you can at the same time turn around and look at everything that's been invested back in this city to make this city better. You're looking at now, now for the first time, in how many years has this city actually addressed the need of water? You cannot build more homes and you cannot bring more businesses back to the city of Delphi if you don't invest in that water. And we're doing it. And we're doing it because we have the available funds to match the grants to do it. My question about surplus was in the solid waste. It wasn't about the general fund. She had mentioned, the mayor mentioned that we have a surplus in our solid waste fund. And that's what I was referring to when I said, how can we have a surplus in that? Because you were talking along the lines, this is based upon the user fees. And she said the $10 um, per household is not covering the current cost, but yet we have a surplus in solid waste. That was what my reference was to. And I can't tell you exactly how that surplus was built up. My guess would be that when the city uh, decided to get out of the trash collection